Hi, I'm Kerry, the host of Best of Us Investors. I invest for the long term. I basically invest for the future and um, read a lot about it and, and believe that our world's going to change dramatically between now and 2030. And so I focus on biotech. I've done a lot about um, genome sequencing and genome editing and CRISPR and the different therapies. And I think that was all accelerated as a result of the corona crisis. Uh, I've also done five uh, videos since January the 1st where I've talked about 3D printing, what they the industry calls additive printing, that you're adding something to create an object uh, as opposed to negative where you start with a big sheet piece of metal and you either grind it down or you cut it and shape it. And additive um, manufacturing is a big part of our future and it's growing exponentially as we learn more about it. And I, and I talked about that um, on June the 10th when I did a video on a desktop metals, one of the three companies in this space that I own. Um, and as I've spent more and more time trying to figure out exactly where the four companies that I recognize in this additive manufacturing space, how they line up together, I've decided that I need to uh, get to know the CEOs because what I'm finding is, in several cases, the founder of the company is the CEO. I like that. In other cases, I'm finding that new people have come in to reorganize some of these companies to more focus them on where they feel the opportunities. I assume that means the board of directors because the past CEO is gone. Uh, so I'm learning more about it, and I want to share that, what I've learned, and I wanted to also, if I hadn't told you before, tell you that I am going to be interviewing the CEO from Desktop Metals next week. Um, his name is Rick Fallop, um, and he's a, a very intelligent gentleman, and uh, I think it's it's a big plus that he founded the company, and he's taking it in a direction. And I think there's it's really important to understand the different elements of 3D printing. And that's what I want to talk to you in this video and emphasize the importance that that you own some of these companies and, and why I think you should own them. So stick with me. Again, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor. I invest in the future. I don't care a lot about what's happening on the stock market today. I don't care about inflation and I don't care about rotation. I care about what's going to change my life. And I believe the future is coming faster than you think. I believe the future is coming faster than it ever has in the past. So stick with me. I think this will be enlightening and um, you, you can potentially make some money off of it. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. There are four companies that I'm focusing on, and I guess my commitment to you is the way I invest, I don't try to be a generalist. I don't try to learn learn a little bit about a whole lot of things. I try to learn a whole lot about a very few things. And as I said, those few things right now focus on electric vehicles, um, 3D printing, robotics, biotech, and a little bit cybersecurity. I think that's, that's raised its head just recently, and there are some opportunities to make some money here uh, or there. Um, in this video, though, I want to talk about 3D printing. I don't think that most of, I was speaking to Nita, my wife, about this, and, and she says, I don't think most of the world cares about that, Carrie. And I said, no, I, I, I think you're right. And I think 
actually most of the people don't care about making money. Most people don't recognize the opportunity to get rid of their nine to five job and create a, a good living just off of learning how to invest. And what I mean by that is what I kind of said a little earlier is that you don't want to be a generalist because you're going to be you're going to be beat at the game. Um, they got too much equipment on their side that you don't have, like quantum computing and and microsecond trading and all that sort of thing. But if you will focus on just a few areas and then become the smartest guy in the room, you're going to be way ahead. And what I've been doing, <clears throat> I identified four companies in the... Um, in the 3D printing area, which again, I believe as a result of our broken uh, supply chain, as, a, as a, a, a move to reduce our carbon footprint, as, uh, as a move to make lighter, stronger, faster um, materials out of all kinds of, of, um, of, of materials, this is a part of our future. This is a part, a, a very fast coming part of our future. In fact, I would say you could look at the, the 1980s and someone said to you, what do you know about the internet? And you wouldn't know much. You, you might know the dot com and the word URL and something like that. Well, that's where we are in 3D printing. If you would ask someone, what they know about 3D printing, you're going to find they don't know much. Um, and that's your advantage if you know a lot. So I've, I've dug into it and I find that there's, there's four major players. Now, Hewlett Packard's a player in this, but I don't see Hewlett Packard devoting the energy and the, the um, know-how that these four companies do. Uh, I'm looking at um, uh, Stratus, that's S-S-Y-S, -S -S, 3D Systems, that's D-D-D, X1, that's X-O-N-E, and Desktop Metals, that's D-M. As I said, I'm going to be interviewing the CEO of Desktop Metals uh, next week. What I have found is, is there going to be one winner and the rest are going to lose? The other three are going to lose? No. I think what I have realized and what I've done, and I'd, I'd recommend you, that you, you do this. I subscribe to um, Seeking Alpha. And so I look up all these stocks and I put together a spreadsheet here that tells me what their revenues were. Uh, in 2020, what they project them to be in 2021, and then calculate a growth projection. And then I look at their earnings uh, per share, uh, their market cap, their debt, their cash, their price, uh, when they were founded, how many employees they have, um, who their CEO is. And then I go to the Seeking Alpha. Uh, they have transcripts of their uh, quarterly earnings. And a lot of these are recorded. And so I get to listen to the CEOs and quite often the C -E CFOs uh, explain not only what they did last quarter as opposed to a year ago, but also what they project to be their earnings and their growth for the, the, the coming year. And what that done gives me is an introduction to their CEO. And, and I learn uh, where their head's at and where they see they're going and how they address, as many of them did in the, the work I did this past week, uh, the difficulties that they had in the uh, coronavirus. In some cases, then I also am able to extract that they're really not competing with each other, that each one of them is cutting out a segment of the industry 
that they want to go after, such as some of them want to go after mass production. So they're dealing with Ford and General Motors and Honda and VW and, and Tesla, and they're creating an atmosphere such as, hey, we can make this part for you in mass production and um, give you not only the machine to print it, but the software to design it and and to then manage those uh, these uh, multiple printers so that you have a as you need it basis printed and then we can run those printers through our software to print one piece today another piece tomorrow and in fact have one printer do uh, one day metals the next day polymers and plastics, and the next day, woods. Yeah, wood. Uh, they take actually sawdust and, and, and wood chips and recreate wood. I read where some of them are actually going to print your whole dashboard. And you know that wood look? It will be wood. Uh, and, that, and, and, and think about that. They're saying, we're going to take the scrap wood that your builder was throwing away or your furniture uh, maker was was throwing away good mahogany or or whatever and to recycle it and print it into something that you would like to have in your car or whatever then i know i recognize some of them are are becoming very um I guess you'd almost call it luxury oriented. And that is to say, they're going after the medical field. They're going after the the big orthodontic product practice who I go in with a broken leg and they, re, they literally are going to have to replace the bone in my, in my leg. Well, they'll, they'll print it. But what they're explaining is this is a high margin business because my bone is different than your bone. So it's not like we're mass producing parts for cars. We're, we're printing bones for legs and every leg is different. And this is true. They're, they're printing medi medical replacements, such as you may need a replacement nose. Well, your nose is different than my nose. So the margins on noses is a lot better than the margin on gears in your car or the rubber hose that goes from your radiator to your engine. And, and the margins are different and these various companies are going after these different markets. Now, some of them are also saying, we're going to specialize in the United States, whereas others are saying, we're doing 60% of our business in Europe and Asia. Now, I ask the question, okay, and, and they openly say in their reports that they're doing, they're really going after China. Well, do you really believe that the Chinese are going to continue to buy the 3D printers from the United States? They, 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 look, look at Tencent. I believe Tencent is a copy of, uh, is it Google? Alibaba is a copy of Amazon and uh, Baidu is, no, I think Baidu is Google. The, 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 they're going to buy your 3D printer and your 3D software, and then they're just going to copy it and they'll take that business. So as I go into these companies, I learn this. So now I look at uh, SSYS and DDD and XONE and DM, and they're all in the 3D biz, 3D printing business. But I know they're very different, and they're going after different markets. They're going to have different um, mar margins, and they're going after different regions of the world. So that's what I'm sharing with you here, is if you want to be a good investor, you need to dig deep. Because I think if 
for for ninety nine percent of investors, they you all think these are the same companies. That not the same companies, but they're all after the same business. They're not. They're they're very different. So what I look at it now and say I need to even deeper understand their business plans. I need to even deeper understand the head of their CEO. So that is why I'm going to sit down next week with Rick Fullop and get inside his head and ask him some questions based upon the knowledge that I've acquired over the last two weeks and will continue to acquire until I talk to him next week so that I can know better about where they are and when and where they're headed and when they're going to get there. It's like one of them uh, I own, I'm probably going to back out of because I think because of some things they're doing, their price is going to decrease through 2021 and really won't rebound until twenty mid-2022. So that's what a good investor does. And that's what I want to bring to you. I want to teach you how I'm doing it. And then I want to share my information with you. When I do interview Rick, I'll record it, I'll edit it, and I'll put it up for you so that you can learn as I learn. Truly, what I've realized is I've been in this business a long time. As I said, I'm a retired financial advisor, but I'm learning more about investing by talking to you on a daily basis than I ever did as a financial advisor. I I mean, the knowledge that I'm gaining, and I guess it's not, it's no longer general knowledge, it's specific knowledge. The, the, I just can't believe what I have come to know about uh, genome sequencing and uh, genome editing and CRISPR. I can't believe I know this stuff. Uh, but you can understand it gives me an advantage. And I want to share that advantage with you. I want to be a different YouTube channel. Uh, I really do. Um, I don't want to give you a bunch of hoopla and hooray. I want to make you a better investor. I talked to a gentleman, um, uh, Gabriel, out of uh, Toronto today. And he says, Carrie, I've been in investing for three years and um, I'm in the IT world and I have a nine to five job. Um, but I'd like to be good enough at investing that I don't need a nine to five job. And I really don't think you do. If you, first of all, you've got to build a base of assets that you can grow. Um, I, I, I mean, I've over the last three years, I've the portfolio that I manage on this channel, I've grown from 300,000 to 900,000 this morning. Uh, that's a good living, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, and so, but you got to have the 300,000 or, or whatever to start with. And I think the danger is that you think you can do it on $10,000 and you can do day trading. Um, that's, 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 that's reactionary. Uh, it's gambling. Um, and you're going to lose, uh, it, any, it, it, any more than you think that you can, you can go to, to Las Vegas with $10,000 and sit down at a poker table with nine other guys and, and think that you're going to beat them. No, you've, you've got to focus on a very small segment. And again, I believe the best way to do it is try to figure out what is the next internet? What is the next um, e-commerce? What is the next cell phone? Uh, what is the next big change? And, and truly understand, the biggest change you've had in your life was the coronavirus. And what's going to spawn out of that is what's going to make you rich. And I believe it's, it's biotech, it's uh, 3D printing, 
it's um, um, robotics, and then not as a result of the coronavirus, but just the destruction of our environment, it's electric vehicles. So that's where I'm focusing. Uh, come, come take this ride with me, and I think it'll, it'll be beneficial to you. Subscribe. Get your friends to subscribe. We're building a tribe. You can join the tribe at bestofusinvestors.com and, uh, and grow with us. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.